Good day, good day. Welcome, Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thanks again for joining in. Today we will finish up chapter 2 of 1 John. 1 John, we will finish up chapter 2. And what a teaching, what a teaching, what a teaching, what we are learning from the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is what? The Word of God is God breathed, and it is for inspiration, for teaching, for training in righteousness, for training in righteousness and holiness, for correction, for correction. So when we have the word of God, we will fall under all those categories. Uh, so let's not be, let's be encouraged that we can be corrected. Let's be encouraged that we can hear the word of that is given by inspiration of God. So as we know uh, where John is saying, he, his last, uh, we discussed uh, just to kind of recap, uh, in verse 23, he said, no one who habitually denies this on the son even has the father. Who co Whoever confesses, acknowledges, and has the son has the father. So we must understand that it is a necessary step to receive and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yes, it's a necessary step that we ha allow him to have lordship over our life. Lordship means government to govern us, govern our lives, uh, that we will acknowledge him in all our ways, that he may direct our path. So as we continue on in this wonderful uh, and growth-causing <laughs> growth causing uh subject of servants of light and servants of darkness servants of truth and servants of a liar uh servants of untruth and he writes here in first john 2 and 24 as for you keep in your heart what you have heard what you have heard from the beginning if what you heard from the first dwells and remains in you then you will dwell in the son and in the Father always. You hear what he said? If, if what you heard from the first dwells and remain in you, then you will dwell in the Son and in the Father always. Verse 25. And this is what he himself has promised us, the life, eternal, eternal life. Now, Remember, in the beginning of chapter 1, he said, I am writing to you because of what? Because of what I have heard, what we have heard. We are writing to you because of what we have heard, what we have seen, and what we have touched. So he is saying we heard the word of our master. We already knew the word of the Lord, but what our master did is he explained it to us whereby we received it fully in faith so that we could act it out in our lives. And not only that, I saw him while he was alive. I saw him after he had risen, had been raised from the dead. I saw him as he went up into heaven to be with the Father. I saw him. I saw him. I experienced the miracles. I experienced the enlightenment and illumination of the word. I grew and grew and grew in Christ. This is what he said. I have that, and I'm giving it to you. And if you remain, if you remain in what you have heard, then the Lord will dwell in you and in the Father, that you will dwell in the Son and the Father. Because what? Because the Father, Jesus said in John chapter 17, I and the Father are one. And what did he ask God? That they may be one with us. So he is, John is reiterating what he wrote in the book of John, of the gospel of of Christ. He's reiterating that here. So he is basically saying we must have a foundation. 
Yeah, we must have a foundation, and it has to be a firm foundation. And as he writes about the foundation, he is telling uh, this these wonderful uh, lads, because remember, he's talking to these lads here. And so he's saying, look, I'm writing to you, verse 26, I, I write this to you, with reference to those who would deceive you, seduce and lead you astray. So people that come and they'll lie, they'll tell you, no, you don't have to do all that. That that went out. We are contemporary. You know, God don't mean this. God don't mean that. God mean exactly what he write in his word. And what do he say in Malachi? I think in chapter 3 of Malachi, look it up, uh, that I change not. I change not. God say, I don't change. I'm not going to change because people sin change. I'm not going to change because we want to live like outlaws and uh, we want the word of God to be twisted, you know, to be twisted so it fits our lawlessness. And that's what sin is. It is lawlessness. It is rebellion against God and he is saying here I write this to you with reference to those who would deceive you seduce you and lead you astray so just because someone is standing in a behind a podium which we call a pulpit then that don't mean that they're always leading us to the truth we have to know the truth so that we will not be deceived because there are people out there not because they intend to receive us but there are those who that, that do intend to deceive but there are some just because they do not know the truth according to the word of God that the word of God has been revealed to them by the Holy Spirit so they uh <laughs> unintentionally deceive people and why are we deceived because we are too lazy to study the word and learn the word for ourselves now do that mean that we do not need teachers no that's not what it means but as we have teachers we should be learning on our own is salvation is of we are responsible for our own salvation. We are responsible for our own growth. Uh, the our disciple, uh, which uh, Jesus, they call the Lord Master. They call him teacher. So we should have someone that we can call teacher. We should have someone that we trust uh, our eternal life with because that's what a spiritual leader is. He is someone that we have entrusted our <laughs> our future to so let's not be silly and not um not study the word of god and be deceived and led astray first john 2 27 but as for you the anointing the sacred appointment the unction uh, the unction means the life um which you receive from him abide permanently permanently in you so then you have no need that anyone should instruct you, but just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is no falsehood, so you must abide, live in, never depart from him, being rooted in him, knit, knit to him, just as his anointing has taught you to do. So when he say that you, uh, the anointing is in you, then you don't, you need not anyone to teach you. Well, that's not saying that you don't need uh, to sit under someone who will train and teach. That does not mean that. It simply means that you have the anointing so that you will be able to learn uh, if you do not have a teacher. And even if you do have a teacher, you, are, you will be learning under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So this is what that means. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything, it's anointing. So what is his anointing? It is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to lead and guide into all truth. And what is no falsehood. So you must abide. See, here is the key here. You must abide. You must constantly be, live in, and never depart from 
the Lord. So in other words, you must never go out and sin. And if you do repent, immediately repent. Do turn from that sin and continue in God. Turn to God and stay there. See, we can't twist the, the word of God. He said that you must, in order for you to be taught uh, and not need to be taught, is what? That you live in Christ. Now, if you live in Christ, there is always going to be someone to teach you because what? Because God the Father require us to continue learning. So we must be able to be taught. We must be able to learn and continue to learn because when we do that, when we do that, we continue to grow. Now, just remember, he's talking to different categories of saints, those at different levels of understanding, like preschool, kindergarten, elementary, uh, uh, junior high, and high school. So we have to understand there are different levels, and we are at uh, different levels from someone else, so we must understand that. First John 2 28, and now little children. He's talking to the little children, the preschoolers, the preschoolers, the preschoolers, kindergarten, abide, live, remain permanently in him so that when he is made visible, we may have an, and enjoy perfect confidence, boldness, and assurance, and not be ashamed and shrink from him at his coming. Now, why would we shrink from him at his coming? That would be because we are not acceptable to him and what we do not look like him. We have not been conformed to the image of the anointed one. We have not been conformed to the image and likeness of the anointed one. And what we have not been living in holiness. For what? For without Holiness, no man shall see the Lord. No man shall see the Lord. So we, and, and that, this is key here too. See, when we refuse to set ourselves apart to God, we're not going to understand anything about God. Why? Because he just said, without holiness, no man will see God. Without holiness, no man will understand what God is saying to us today. So we have to have, and there are degrees of holiness, just like he gave us a pattern with the tabernacle and the temple. There are degrees of holiness, but he wants us to go to the highest level of holiness that we can go into the holiest of holies. So let us graduate and continue to grow in holiness. 1 John 2.29, if you know, perceive, and are sure that he, the anointed one, is absolutely righteous, confirming to the Father's will and purpose, thought, and action, you may also know, be sure that everyone who does righteously, who is holy, and is therefore in like manner, Conform, conform to the divine will is born and begotten of him. So when we are striving and we are constantly uh, being conformed to the divine will of God, that means that we're, be, we're born of God. See, when we oppose God, when we continually in sin, because sin opposes God. Sin opposes God. Darkness and light oppose each other. So what he is saying that when we are born again and we live continuously for God, when we live a holy life, then what? We will in like manner be conformed to God's will. We will be conformed to God's will. And we know what it means to be conformed to God's will. That means obedience. Obedience to his plan his purpose, his word, his will. This is what it means. There is no change in that. We will not change that. God will not change that for us, and uh, <laughs> we can't change it for him. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is the same yesterday and today and forever. The only thing that has changed in God's word, and it has really not changed, but the only thing that is different from the time that the Lord gave the uh, commands on Mount Sinai is that the temple uh, service is no longer in operation. 
And so we don't have to fulfill that. We never had to fulfill it if we were not Jews. But if we come into the commonwealth of God, there are rules, there are regulations, there are laws, the government of God, and we have to follow that. And when we are born of God, when we are born of God, we will therefore, in like manner, confirm to the divine will of God, to his divine will, his purpose, and we will do that. We will do that in thought, purpose, and action. What we have seen, what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have touched, we will do these things. He is saying to these uh, young children, he's teaching them. And see, we have to be taught uh, at every level, at every level. We learn at ev every level. He gave four levels here. He gave the little children. He gave the boys. He gave the fathers. And he spoke to the men. That are, those are different levels. And it could be uh, uh, equated to different years of learning and understanding and living out what we have learned and understand in order to serve God according to his divine will. So it is our responsibility to know what level we are on, what level we're at, what grade, <laughs> I can say what grade, what, what grade we're in in the school of the Almighty, you see. And we can make it real plain and real simple. What grade am I in the school of the Almighty? Am I a preschooler? Am I a kindergarten? Am I, you know, I could be in daycare. <laughs> yeah, I could be in daycare. It don't make a difference. If I've been going to church for 15 years, I can still be a daycare student in the kingdom of God. It depends on our growth and how we live. So we need to understand in the growth level, in the developed stages of development, I will say here in the stages of development in the kingdom of God, where we are, and we must examine ourselves and see how we can continue to grow and graduate from one level of uh, education to another one in God. And education means lifestyle. Father, we thank you for your word. We praise you. Cause us to understand and examine ourselves so that we may grow and continue to grow in holiness and into perfection. And for our Father, we ask this and we ask this in Jesus' name. Heal us, O oh God. Cause us to live a life of holiness, Father. And we ask this in Jesus' name. May you be blessed, O oh God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord.